Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. Now, if you're new to this channel, we do Hemi stuff here. So if you have a Hemi powered vehicle, please consider subscribing to the channel. In this video, we are once again tackling the infamous Hemi Tick. Now, a number of videos ago, I postulated that by installing a Hellcat oil pump on your Hemi engine, you could potentially prevent this Hemi Tick issue from ever actually happening. Now, how is that the case? Well, if you want the long version, go ahead and click on the link right up here, and that'll take you to that video. But the short version is that essentially most of the problems that we see with these lifter failures are on vehicles that have high idle times. Now, as we all know, when you're running your engine at the idle RPM, that's the lowest RPM it's going to see, and there's therefore also the lowest oil pressure that it's going to see. Now, the Hellcat oil pump here has a larger volume to it than your standard pump. This means that even at lower RPMs, you're still going to be getting overall a higher pressure involved because of that higher volume that's going through the engine. So this could actually prevent the Hemi tick issue from happening. Now, a quick note here, it's a prevention issue only. This will not help you if you are already experiencing lift or failure. In this video, which is part one of a two part series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take this thing apart. We're gonna do a bunch of measurements and show you the difference between a stock 5.7 pump and this Hellcat pump. And we're also gonna talk about the various things that it's going to take to actually adapt it onto your Hemi engine. Now we're talking about the Hemi engine. We're talking about the Gen 3 Hemi that started in 2003 all the way up to the current generation. Now, that being the case, there are various differences throughout the years, but they share a lot of similarities. And the goal of this video is to show that you can actually adapt a Hellcat pump onto any of these Hemi engines from 2003 forward. I brought three different oil pumps here so we can do some nice comparison between the three. Now the first one here is from a 2006 Chrysler 300C 5.7 liter. The second one is from a 2017 Ram 1500 5.7. Don't let the uh, looks discourage you here. It initially looked like this one originally, but of course this one was from a blown engine. So it has this nasty burned oil over it. Doesn't matter, we're just using it for comparison's sake. Now the final one here is a Hellcat oil pump. Now this is specifically talking about the 6.2 liter supercharged engine. Note that this is in fact a different oil pump than what the 6.4 liters use. So I think these are the ones that we're really after here, the 6.2 only. Now I did also verify that all of the Hellcat models use this exact same oil pump. There's no difference between any of them. And that includes a Trackhawk and a TRX. So any vehicle that came with the 6.2 liter supercharged engine, this is the exact oil pump it's using. So it really doesn't matter which one you go to. Now, that being the case, I'll go ahead and put the part number for it up on the screen now, and I'll also include it in the description down below. So this is the one we're really talking about here. So first things first here, I'm gonna give you a little overview of the pumps. We're gonna discuss some of the physical differences between them, whether or not the mounting locations are the same, pickup locations are the same. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and pull off the backing plate and actually measure the rotor on the inside, really show you the differences there. Let's get into it. First off, let's go ahead and compare the 2006 oil pump versus the 2017 oil pump. Now, as most of you are aware who have watched my channel before, in 2009 is when the Hemi engine, the Gen 3 Hemi, underwent its first major revision. And at that time, they added VVT, variable valve timing, and they also changed the cylinder heads. So those were two major components that happened. And in fact, to add the VVT, they had to change the block just slightly, but it also necessitated a lot of really minor differences. So really you had two different versions of the Gen 3 Hemi. You had the pre-2009 and you have the post-2009. And there's a lot of differences and things that won't actually interchange between the two. Now, if you have one that's actually post-2009 to current, those are all pretty much the same. There has not been really a major revision to the engine since 2009. So you can expect that all of these components will be pretty much the same after that time. If you have a pre-2009, there are going to be some things you have to look out for. But in this case, we are specifically talking about the oil pumps themselves. So let's take a look at them. Now, the first thing you might notice with these pumps side by side is that physically they do not resemble each other at all. There is a major casting difference between the two and it almost looks like they don't belong to the same kind of engine. But one important thing to note is that if you look at the mounting locations on here, they are in fact identical between the two. 
So this 2006 pump would bolt directly to the 2017 engine block. Now, that is the similarity, the blocks themselves, where it goes to. And then you can see where the outlet comes out here, it's in the exact same location. However, an interesting point to note here is look how small the diameter outlet is on the early Gen 3 model, and look how large the diameter is on the late Gen 3 model. I thought that was a really interesting point. And in fact, the reason why I bring that up is because it doesn't look to me as though the rotor is any bigger on the older version versus the newer version. So why have a larger outlet when you don't have more volume coming out of it anyway? I thought that was kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do some basic measurements here from all these points just to make sure they are identical and then we'll move on. Okay, I thought a good thing to do to kind of verify that these are in fact compatible with each other is to get out my digital caliper gauge and actually measure the mounting holes here to show that they are basically identical between the two. So we're not gonna measure them center to center but we are just gonna get a basic measurement just to try to see if how close they are. So on the outlet side, Looking at 43 millimeters for the 06 pump. And the 2017 pump, the exact same reading. Absolutely exact same, 43.16 millimeters. All right, let's go ahead and measure on the opposite side here. On the 06 pump, we are reading 55.69 millimeters. On the 17 pump, 55.65, so exactly the same between the two. So as far as the block itself goes where the oil pump mounts, these are absolutely identical between the pre-2009 models and the post-2009 models. Now, let me show you the one thing that's the major difference between these two pumps. Here you can clearly see what the difference is between the pre-2009 pump and the post-2009. Look at the angle of the oil pickup tube and how it mounts into the pre-pump versus the post 2009 pump. That one's nice and in line. This one has quite the kick out to it. Now, does this mean that you cannot actually use the later Hellcat pump in a pre 2009 engine? No, in fact, I don't believe that's the case. I do think you can use the 6.2 Hellcat oil pump on a pre 2009 engine. I think it takes a little bit more effort and ingenuity, but I believe it's possible and it's something I'm going to try to prove to you in the second part of this video series. Now when looking at the Hellcat pump here versus the standard 5.7 pump, one thing you'll notice is that they look virtually identical. Physically, there's very few clues from the outside here that would actually let you know that one was a Hellcat pump and one was not. In fact, I had to look for a while before I could even find anything that was actually a good reference point for me to realize that. If you look here from the bottom, they're basically identical as well. The pickup point for the uh, oil pickup is identical between the two, which is fantastic because that means this is literally a direct bolt onto your standard 5.7 engine post 2009. From the back side, also, they look basically identical. There's very, very few visual cues here that can tell you one between the other. However, there's one major difference that actually makes this whole thing even worth doing. Now it can actually be difficult to tell. I'm gonna to try to get a close up here. But if you look on the inside here where the actual gear is that actually generates that oil volume, this one is thinner than this one. This rotor is actually a little bit thicker and that's what provides you that extra volume and therefore extra pressure at idle RPM. Now, if you look at these pumps from the outside here, they seem to be the exact same thickness this way. So I was trying to figure out exactly how they house that larger gear in there, but it turns out that they actually opened up the inside of the pump itself to accommodate it. I'll try to get a close up here, but there's an inner lip here that on this pump is probably about oh, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch wide. Whereas on the Hellcat pump, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch wide. Now I thought that was very interesting what they did there where they just basically essentially milled out the inside housing of the pump to accommodate a larger gear in there to give it more volume. That way they didn't have to change the physical dimensions on the outside and worry about having to change timing covers or anything like that. Now that to me tells me that this might be something that they had planned to do all along to have a larger volume pump in the future. That's something Chrysler has done before. They like to give themselves a little bit of room to grow within the initial design. That way they don't have to redesign the entire component. I think that's good, just good engineering. So now we've seen what they look like physically. Let's go ahead and pull the backing plates off of all three of these oil pumps and take a closer look at the gear itself. 
Here is the 2006 pump. You can see that gear there. Here's the 2017 gear, which really has less wear on it than I would have expected based on the condition of the oil on this thing. Doesn't look too bad, really. Then here is the Hellcat oil pump. Now let's go ahead and count the number of rotors there, see if there's any differences there. But the big thing is the actual depth of the gear itself is different. So they look very, very similar other than that. So I highly suspect these are going to be the same, but let's check it anyway. Let's start here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teeth on the 06 pump. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gear teeth on the 5.7 pump from the 2017. Now that's interesting. I did not realize that there was actually a difference between gear teeth even on those. So 10 teeth here, the Hellcat pump looks similar. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 teeth on the Hellcat pump as well. So again, these are much more similar between the two. That is to be expected. But that's, that's very interesting that there is actually an extra tooth here. Now, important to note that the teeth are actually smaller on this gear on the newer one. Even though there's more of them, the teeth are physically smaller. So I kind of wonder why they made that change itself. The spline pattern on the inside looks to be the same between all the pumps and that is integral to my assertion that this is going to fit. The Hellcat pump will fit any of these Gen 3 Hemis. I'm almost positive that it's the exact same, but we're gonna check that as well. Now, lastly, we're going to measure the actual depth of the gear rotor itself because of course the width of the teeth is going to make a huge difference as well as far as the overall volume that those pumps can produce. Pretty thin overall. The 2006 pump, we are looking at right about 12 and a half millimeters. The 2017 pump does look to be larger, maybe, and it is in fact, it is 14 millimeters. So the 5.7 pump from the 09 and later does have a higher volume capacity than the old 2006 models or up to 2009. I find that interesting. I did not realize there was such a big difference between those. All right, so here's the thing. We've got 12 and a half millimeters here. We got 14 millimeters here. Let's find out just how big this Hellcat oil pump is. We are looking at 16 millimeters. So this pump is a millimeter and a half bigger than this pump. And this pump is two millimeters bigger than this pump. So man, this Hellcat oil pump has a massive capacity more than the older pre-2009 models and still quite a bit more capacity than the post-2009 models. So I really think this is fascinating. Wow, just incredible results here. So I know there's probably a few of you that are like, why is this guy nerding out over just a couple of millimeters? But to be honest, I absolutely love this kind of stuff. This stuff absolutely fascinates me. In fact, when I was in school, I actually always wanted to be a mechanical engineer because it's this kind of stuff that actually really interests me. I think that's very cool. And I also was not expecting such an obvious result physically from these things. So the thing we have to keep in mind when we're dealing with the oil pump that these are a fixed displacement pump. That means that for every single rotation of the engine, they will produce an exact amount of oil. So when you see a very clear and obvious difference here in size, this one being larger and this one being even larger than that, you know for a fact that they will generate more volume per rotation. So that means that we are absolutely going to have that higher pressure at idle that I was talking about. So. I'm excited, man. I, I'm literally all geeked out about this. So I think that was really cool. Uh, even better result than I was expecting doing a physical comparison between these. So guys, even though I don't have specific volume information for you on exactly how much oil these pumps will pump out, we can do some basic math and get some percentages for you. So between the stock 5.7 pump post 2009 and this Hellcat pump, you're looking at about 16 and a half, let's call it 17% volume increase by going to the Hellcat pump. Now, any way you look at it, that is a significant amount. Now, we can't do a direct comparison with the 2006 pump because with less teeth, I'm not exactly sure if the ratios would be correct, but I still feel fairly confident in saying that you're looking at a 25% volume increase between the 06 pump and the Hellcat pump. That is an incredible amount. 
So any way you look at it, guys, I feel like the Hellcat pump is a must-do modification if you're going to have a performance Hemi engine. Now the two oil pumps that I was not able to get for this comparison were the early 6.1 liter SRT oil pump and the later Scat Pack 6.4 liter oil pump. Now regarding the 6.1 liters, obviously we don't see a ton of those out there. There's, they're still out there, but there's not that many. And therefore I don't have enough experience to draw from to tell you guys if that's exactly the same as the 5.7 pump or not. That being the case, I have no reason to suspect otherwise. There might be some very minor differences between the 6.1 the 5.7 that are pre-2009. But honestly, I don't expect those uh, differences, if there are any, to impact being able to install a 6.2 Hellcat pump on that engine. So let's get more into the specifics about actually installing these pumps on the engine. So here's our 2017 Hemi engine and our 2017 Hemi oil pump. You'll notice that the timing gear here has your drive splines on it for the oil pump assembly. So when you're installing these on here, you basically just need to line up these inner drive splines here. And it'll take just a little bit of wiggling, especially with all the timing assembly still in place. It can be a little bit finicky to get it to slip on there. But you basically just have to kind of wiggle it around and move it until you can actually get those splines lined up. There we go. So you go ahead and get that slipped into place right there, bolts up here, and then your oil pump pickup tube. Now the one thing to remember is that the oil pan gasket also doubles as the windage tray on the Hemi engine. So that actually bolts up here and then your pickup tube goes through that windage tray. So you can't actually put the pickup tube on until after your oil pan gasket is in place. Now why is that important about the oil pickup tube? Well, it's important because in order to get this oil pump off of the engine, you actually have to unbolt the oil pickup tube. And on the Ram 1500 engines, the pickup tube goes through that windage tray slash oil pan gasket and back here where it then bolts to one of the main caps. So with the engine oil pan on the vehicle, you can't actually remove the oil pickup tube enough to get the oil pump off. Now, I have heard of people doing that in the past. I have not had success doing it. I kind of want to give it a try right now just to see if I can. But by and large, my expectations are that if you have a Ram 1500, if you want to put that Hellcat oil pump on, expect that you'll have to pull off the engine oil pan to do so. All right, I've got the engine flipped over here to give you guys a better visual indication of what I was talking about. So you have the engine oil pan that goes right here, and then you have your pan gasket. And as you can see, the pickup tube goes right through the gasket, which again doubles as a windage tray, and it bolts right here. So with this thing bolted in place, it would be very difficult to get this bolt loose and then get it loose enough to get that out of there to actually remove the oil pump. Now again, I have heard of people doing so, but I'm not sure if they're prying on the oil pump pickup tube and kind of bending it out of place in order to get the pump off of there. I suspect you could do that, but honestly, I just don't feel comfortable doing so. I'd rather go through the whole effort of actually pulling the oil pan gasket off and doing this the right way. So on the Ram 1500s, this is kind of the setup that you're looking at. Now, on the other hand, if you have a Challenger, Charger 300, something like that, you absolutely can change out the engine oil pump without pulling the oil pan out of there. All you have to do is, when you get these four primary bolts undone for the oil pump, you have a little bit of wiggle room here. Now the pickup tube on the Challengers, Chargers 300s is very short. It's only about this long and it goes from right here right to the front sump of the pan. So it just hangs out there by itself. It doesn't have any additional support. So when you have the front timing cover off, you can actually shift this thing just enough to get to the oil pump pickup bolt right here. You take that bolt out, being very careful not to actually drop it down into the pan, because then you have to fish it out with a magnet, it's a huge pain in the butt. But once you pull that bolt out, then you can pull the pickup tube out and just let it rest right there in the front of the pan. And then by doing so, you can remove this oil pump, replace it with a Hellcat pump, fish that oil pump pickup tube back into place with a new O-ring, always change the O-ring, and then bolt it back into place, put that front cover back on, you're good to go, it's pretty easy. So again, just to prove the compatibility of these two things here, so this is the 2017 pump, you go ahead and just pull that guy right off of there. And slip the Hellcat pump right into its place. And literally everything just bolts right up. So if you have a post-2009, a 2009 or later Hemi engine, this 6.2 Hellcat pump will absolutely bolt right up, 
no questions asked. It's a straight swap between the two. So lucky you guys on the post 2009 engines. But does that mean that hope is lost for those pre 2009 engines? That's what we're gonna take a look at next. So this here is another 2006 Hemi engine that I have. Now this is out of a Chrysler 300. So this is where I was saying it just has this simple oil pickup tube here that goes right down into the front sump. So in this case, I wanna try to show you guys how on these engines, you can actually just turn the oil pump a little bit and actually remove this bolt and let the pickup tube rest in there while you change out the pump and not actually have to pull the oil pan on these engines because they're definitely much more of a pain on the cars than they are on the trucks. So let's dive into it here. So I've already got these four bolts loose for the oil pump. Like I said, you just kind of shift it up and look how much room you have to actually get to that 13 millimeter bolt that actually holds the oil pickup tube in place. So let's go ahead and break this thing free. All right, so the bolt comes out again, try not to drop it down to the pan there. And then you can just work the pickup tube free and it'll just rest down there in the oil pan. It's not hurting anything by doing that. And then you just slide the oil pump right off. So you can see just how simple that is. Now. I'm remembering now that on the post 2009 engines, what you want to do to achieve enough room to get the oil pump off is you wanna go ahead and time the engine, put it to the top dead center for piston number one here, and then you will actually take the tensioner out. It's a different style tensioner assembly. It's held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. You remove that tensioner assembly and that'll give you the free play you need to rock it up enough to get that lower bolt out for the oil pickup tube. So now at this point, it's just a matter of swapping out the oil pump itself. Now also something I was very interested in trying was to see if I could get that oil pump pickup tube out of the pan uh, as it sits. I've never actually removed it completely. I just kind of wanted to rest it in there, but I'm kind of thinking there's enough room to actually get that out of there. And that's critical for something you'll see in just a moment. Let's see if we can snake it out of here. Oh, not even trying. Very simple. So you can see just how easy of a tube that is, it just rests down in there with no problem at all. Very, very cool. Now, as we spoke about earlier in the video, the big difference between the older pump and the newer pump that's a major deterrent to installing them on the pre-2009 engines is the angle of the pickup tube relative to the pump housing itself. These ones have a bit of an angle to them. Now, there's a couple of different ways around that. So what I did in my 392C10 over there is I actually used a 2006 pickup tube from a pickup truck. And all I did was I took the tube and I cut, I ended up cutting the end off of it here and then I rotated it and then re-welded it. But of course you have to have certain tools and certain skills to be able to do that. So the point of this video is I was really hoping to show you guys a bolt-on solution here. And it's one that you don't have to do any actual modifications to. And I think I have the solution. And hopefully here is that solution. Now this is actually the pickup tube for a Challenger for a Hellcat that should just go right into this pump with no issue. But as you can see, they're very, very similar in design basically identical. Only thing that's different is the angle of the mount for them. So I believe this will be a direct bolt-on for this vehicle. Now you notice that this one does have this kind of pickup point here for a bolt-on application. We're not going to use that. Um, I'm gonna see if it'll just bolt in as is, or you may have to actually cut this off before you install it. But realistically, either way, I think this is gonna work just fine. So just like the stock one, we'll go ahead and slip it down into the pan into place here. Just let it rest. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the Hellcat oil pump. Now this is the moment of truth for me. I have believed from the very beginning that this spline count is identical between the, the two generations of Gen 3. So, and it was exactly at this moment that my dream started to fall apart a little bit. Now, as you guys know, in this video, the whole point was to show that you can adapt a 6.2 liter Hellcat oil pump to any Gen 3 model engine, whether it be from 2003 all the way to the present. We're talking 5.7, 6.4, doesn't matter. Now we've already proved in this video that post 2009, so 2009 up to the current generation, it will be a direct fit. You can use your stock pickup tube with no issue. It's just a plug and play situation to improve that oil pressure at low idle RPMs. But my goal in this video was to show that you could also do so with the pre 2009 engines as well. Well, when I was just test fitting this, I overlooked one major component when we were doing our initial measurement testing. I'm gonna show you what that is right now. 
All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. Now, when they added VVT in 2009, they actually had to push the oil pump out just a little ways to actually make room for it because the whole entire timing chain assembly moved out as well. So if you look at the mounting location on an 06 pump, look how wide that is. Now directly compare that to the Hellcat pump. You can see how much wider that is. So they really pushed it that way quite a bit. In fact, 12 millimeters was how much they moved it. So I'll try to make it clear for you here, but on a 2017 model engine with the VBT, if you look in there and you can see how big this gap is between the block and the actual timing gear itself, pretty decent gap there. Now, if you switch over and look at the 06 engine, that same gap much reduced. And in fact, it is 12 millimeters of difference because they pushed the entire timing chain out. And in fact, the block casting themselves are different to move all of that out. So again, if you look at the 2017 here, you can see, well, might be tough to see on camera, but everything is pushed out a significant amount. That way you can accommodate that VVT system. Now the length of the crankshaft itself when measuring to the block is identical between the pre-2009 and post-2009 engines. You're looking at about 110 millimeters from the actual face of the first main bearing out to the end of the crankshaft. Now let's go ahead and measure on the 2006 model. All right, right there, 110 millimeters. So the crankshaft length is indeed identical. The only difference is that little cone that's built into the crankshaft that pushes it out an additional 12 millimeters. So then what does that mean for our attempts to adapt this Hellcat pump to the 06 engine? Well, it means that while it does actually go on to the timing gear, the splines are in fact correct and the mounting pattern is all correct. But because it's pushed so far out, the inner splines of the pump itself do not engage correctly to the correct depth with the oil pump. So I would not feel comfortable running this because they're only engaged about maybe a quarter of an inch. Fortunately, the pre-2009 models, you will not be able to use this without doing some sort of modifications or adaptations. Now you guys know me, I'm gonna continue on with this because in fact, the test bed vehicle that we are going to do our real world testing on for our uh, oil pressure numbers is a pre-2009 model. So I have to make this work. So I'm gonna continue on try to brainstorm a little bit about ways I can actually make this thing work. I'm hopeful that I can do so in a somewhat simple fashion, but we might have to go a little bit more extreme. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Now, if you think about it in the uh, it, your first blush instinct, the thing to do would be to cut 12 millimeters off the backside of these mounting points here to suck it back into where it normally would go. That was indeed my first instinct. Now, one thing to think about though, is that this right here is a machine surface. That means that it just mates up flush with the block itself. There is no gasket there between the oil pump and the block. This means that this surface has to be 100% flat, otherwise you're going to be losing that oil pressure out the side, and we're gonna completely negate any point of doing this in the first place. I myself do not have access to a mill or anything like that where I can guarantee that it's going to be perfectly flat. You can do it by hand, it's a lot more work, and I kind of don't really want to go down that road. Now, the second thing is, as you know, we need to remove 12 millimeters to get it right back where it should be. However, if you look at the design of the pump itself, it's actually tapered right here. It's not a straight back. So that means you can't just take 12 millimeters off and call it good because the feed outlet would be in a different place if you did that. It wouldn't actually line up with the block anymore. So basically all you can take off is this initial flange right here, which I've already measured as five millimeters. So five millimeters would get us in a decent amount and it would definitely engage those splines to where I'm feeling more comfortable with it. But again, I'm still not sure that's the direction I want to go. I think there's some other options, some brainstorming that needs to be done so I can actually take a look at this thing and say, maybe I could try this, maybe I could try that. Any way you look at it, guys, it's kind of a bummer, but we're gonna get there. You're gonna have to wait until part two of this video to figure out what exactly our solution is because that's when I'm going to introduce our new project vehicle. I know you guys are excited to see that. Like I said, that's where our real world testing is going to take place on. And we're going to get into that in the next video. We'll see you guys next time on Reignited.